Welcome to the American Institute of Healthcare Professionals videogram on Christian counseling and antisocial personality disorders. And I would just like to state in the beginning that these types of disorders are to be treated only by clinical therapists, licensed therapists. While some of these therapists might have a Christian training background, that's great. But if you are only a pastoral counselor, a lay Christian counselor, these are types of disorders that are not to be treated just through Christian counseling, but do require uh, a very higher level of clinical therapy, which sometimes isn't even enough for these types of antisocial personality disorders. Now, what we want to do in this video is look at them from a Christian perspective and offer a little bit of advice. But again, to leave the actual therapy to clinical and licensed mental health care professionals. Sociopathy and psychopathy are two terms that fall under the spectrum of antisocial personality disorder. They are not technically listed as terms that are utilized as diagnosis, or they are just characteristics that describe the particular uh, antisocial personality spectrum of the individual themselves. But what we need to understand with these two types of antisocial personality disorders is that they are completely and totally devoid of conscience. Uh, They're devoid of right and wrong. And they are also extremely self-serving and they all carry a component of narcissism within itself. Now, these types of disorders are not a free ticket to sin in Christianity, obviously. Obviously, they have uh, uh, an ability to affect the mind, the, uh, the mental makeup of the individual, the chemicals within the brain in some cases. Other cases, they're just habitual disorders that continue to uh, create these types of individuals without a moral conscience. Now, these individuals do have to answer to God for what they do wrong, but it is an understanding that they are hooked, so to speak, to a mental pathology, which can in some cases, not all, but in some cases, possibly reduce some culpability. But like all disease, like all disorders, it entered into the world via sin, the sin of Adam. So instead of being a isolated sin, these types of sins become perpetual and habitual. The narcissist, his self or her self-love. And then we come into the serious conditions of the sociopath and the psychopath, where it is almost a completely broken or nearly completely broken conscience that no longer operates. It no longer functions. In sociopathy, we see an individual who has no conscience, who is in complete self-love with oneself. But the, the development of the disorder was due to a trauma, a trauma that was never fixed, that later continued to develop this type of warped conscience, this broken conscience. Now, psychotherapy, I mean, psychopathy, on the contrary, is more of a mental defect. It's not as learned as sociopathy. And it involves an element of nature in itself, the seed of the imbalance. And through improper nurturing, it can grow to greater and more dangerous levels in itself. Again, both are part of the same disorder. It's an antisocial personality disorder, but some of them are a little bit more severe than others, such as psychopathy being a little bit more severe than sociopathy in itself. 
Sociopathy, as we stated, develops from trauma and behavior without consequences. The individual child, as the child grows, might experience a traumatic event, as well as a lifestyle that permits them from doing whatever they want. And very much so, narcissism is an inc included ingredient. But with sociopathy, the, the conscience itself is broken, and that prevents empathy, it prevents remorse, and it prevents any type of adherence to a moral law. The person becomes their own god in many ways as a sociopath, and people that exist around them exist to serve their needs. And when those needs are not met, since a sociopath doesn't have a conscience, a sociopath is willing to cheat, steal, lie, gaslight, or do anything to achieve his or her goals. A sociopath will destroy careers and relationships of others if they stand in their way. Extremes of sociopathy exist, uh, which might make one willing to go further in terms of uh, attacking an individual. Maybe they it would be go beyond verbal. It is possible to go to a physical level. So sociopaths can be tied to murder. Uh, but many sociopaths exist within the framework of the law, breaking it when they can, but for the most part, utilizing things within the law to hurt other people through civil lawsuits, maybe, or through gossip or through backstabbing an individual to achieve a goal, walking over others. So almost every other every type of career criminal is a sociopath to some extent. And many individuals in business, believe it or not, not all, but many people in business who just walk over others share sociopathic tendencies. Sociopaths are also very hot-blooded. Uh, they can appear very charming at first, but they are very emotional and impulsive individuals in carrying out what they need. Now, psychopaths are part of the same antisocial personality disorder, but they have more of a mental defect that is never ever diagnosed or or tried to be controlled at a younger age. So we've seen television shows and movies about this American psychopath, Alfred Hitchcock's famous Psycho, and of course, uh, Netflix, You. And these are some uh, types of series or movies that look at psychopaths and really take you into their mind and what they think. Uh, psychopathy is not only behavioral, like a sociopath, but it involves a mental defect. And again, like sociopathy, the common antisocial disorder characteristic is no conscience, no empathy, no remorse, any means to any end possible. Unlike a sociopath, though, psychopath is more cold-blooded and detached from society. They can appear very charming, but they're very cold-blooded and calculated. They will blend well in society despite their dysfunction. Now, psychosis can coincide, but psychosis is an entirely separate phenomenon. An example of psychosis would be, I had to kill someone because the little green man in my head told me to do so. That would be an example of psychosis. So individuals with uh, psychopathy who are psychopaths could very well have psychosis or they may not have psychosis. But for the most part, an individual who is a sociopath or a psychopath is an individual that's willing to do whatever they need to do without any remorse or conscience for it. So again, when Christian counseling these types of severe antisocial disorders, it is, it is important to understand that only clinical licensed counselors psychotherapists, psychologists, psychiatrists can deal with this. Now, if you're certified Christian counselor with those types of uh, licensures or backgrounds, then you could apply concepts of Christian teaching, obviously, with these individuals. But for the most part, many of these individuals do not seek 
help because they're without conscience or remorse and they don't feel that they need help. They feel they're already perfect. So it's very hard for them to come for help. And if they are, it's more because they're being pushed or it's to meet an end in itself. So the counseling is a means. It's not in itself an end in itself. Individuals who have these disorders are usually placed on mood stabilizers or various antipsychotic medications. Uh, pastorally, they can be taught, despite their lack of empathy, what is right and wrong through scripture. Uh, but primarily, healing for them is through God's grace and prayer. Now, for individuals who might be uh, trapped in a relationship with them, uh, dealing with them can be dangerous if you share an office with them or in a relationship with them. Uh, so sometimes if you have the option, just like with a narcissist, it's best to walk away. But if you're unable to walk away, uh, it's very important to understand how these disorders work. It's very important to build boundaries, just like with a narcissist. It's very important to, con to constantly uh, assess threat levels. Not all sociopaths will take it to the, the final level of murder or a psychopath will take it to the final level of murder. But there are many out there that exist that will make one's life very, very difficult in regards to getting them fired, possibly breaking up a marriage or things of that effect and go well beyond damaging property and so forth. So if you're dealing with these types of individuals in your life and you can't get away, it's important to have support and to speak carefully with them and live a prayerful life itself. We offer at AIHCP a Christian counseling certification. Below is the link. Our number is 330-652-7776 and our email is info at AIHCP.org. Have a good day and thank you for listening.